The Game Boy Advance. The fourth version in the Game Boy line, preceded by the original, the Pocket, and the Color. It is basically a portable Super NES. They came in many colors. As you can see, I have a silver and a charcoal gray one here, but they also came in blue, red, camo, and there were some special edition versions as well. They were backwards compatible with every Game Boy game at the time, and even compatible with the Game Boy Color Link cable, which brings us to the first of his strange accessories. The Game Boy Advance wireless adapter, only compatible with about 25 games. This was packaged with many versions of Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red, but was also for sale by itself for about 20 bucks. Although it used RF technology, the range was very poor. 10 feet, or about 3 meters, which was not much longer than some wired link cables. The only true advantage this had over the link cable was the number of players that could connect at one time. Up to 39 wireless players could enter a special room and compatible Pokemon games for trades and battles. Other than that, at most 5 different people could be connected, which was only one more than the wired version. Now you can usually find these for about two or three bucks, various locations. Not many people know what these things are or even know what they need to go to. Next on the list is the GameCube slash Game Boy Advance Link Cable. This was a replacement of the transfer pack that existed for the Nintendo 64. The cable would allow the Game Boy to be used to unlock bonus content, transfer game information, use the Game Boy as a controller, and even a second screen. My favorite game that used this cable was Pac-Man vs. Although a standard Pac-Man game, it did have new maps and a slightly new way of playing. Using a Game Boy, you could be playing the arcade-style Pac-Man, and up to three friends could be controlling the ghosts in a 3D third-person perspective on the television. This was great for parties and get-togethers, because almost everyone knows how to play the original, and this does not take too long to learn. Using a Game Boy Advance to prevent screen hacking is one of the best uses of this cable I have come across. Most of the functions, however, were to unlock bonus content or use the Game Boy as a controller. Now there were at least two different versions that I have managed to find, both of which I have here. The first being the official Nintendo cable. All it did was connect the two consoles. However, it appears that there was a third party version that had a link cable port on the back to connect to another Game Boy Advance while you're connected to a GameCube. I have yet to find out what this can be used for. Now the original cable goes anywhere from 10 to $15 on eBay and Amazon. However, I found this third party one in a local store for about five bucks. Last, but certainly not least, is the Game Boy Advance e-reader. First, this thing is massive. It's thicker than the Game Boy when it's folded up, and the content would come on these special cards with a bunch of dots on either side of the card. They are scanned in the device like sliding a credit card. Some games were simple enough to only require a single card with information, however most needed at least five, with two dot codes on each card. Scanning these things in can be tedious. You swipe, you swipe, you swipe, and you swipe some more. For the games, it was purely a gimmick, because almost all of the games that were released on these card packs existed on an actual Game Boy Advance cartridge. And due to their rarity, the cards in many cases are more expensive than buying the cartridges. Plus, if you lost a card or it got damaged, the whole set is useless. There is one advantage to having an e-reader versus a cartridge. You could effectively share your games with your friends, as long as they also had an e-reader system as well. 
There were some cards made to unlock bonus content and additional levels, or even characters, to a game. This was used extensively in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, as there were special trainers, berries, and even a whole island with a special Pokemon that could be unlocked. It could be used in other games as well. Super Mario Advance to unlock new levels, F-Zero to do the same, and even Mario Party. In a way, these cards were a predecessor to the current Ambio series that's recently been released by Nintendo. You get a few cards, you can unlock special characters, although these never caught on the way the Ambio figures have, and have become somewhat rare. I managed to get my pack new in the box from a seller on eBay. He was selling them for about three bucks a piece, with the shipping included, because he had about 50 of them he needed to get rid of. However, due to the failure of the e-reader system in the US, many of these cards got a one-time release at exclusive events or locations. Well, what I have here are some pirate cards I have printed up. All they have is the dot code. This collection is Donkey Kong. With the program I have, I can print almost any card I want. This includes video games and unlockables. These are really easy to print up. I just went down to my local office supply store, had them print up high resolution copies on printer cardstock. The e-reader system itself you can find from anywhere from three bucks to about eight bucks is the most I've ever seen it. The e-reader system itself isn't really useful unless you have cards. However, the ones I've come across have had existing information These are just a few weird accessories I've come across in my days of video game collecting. So keep a lookout for the strange and unusual and check out my other videos. Hey, thanks for watching the first video for strange and unusual accessories. I plan on making this a bi-weekly segment, so keep an eye out for new episodes. And if you can click on the subscribe button, it would help out. And remember, every time a subscribe button is clicked, a player gets a 1-up.